What do you think is going to happen over the next few years with the cost of living crisis, which is not just in the UK, it's, all, it's pretty much all over the world. Yeah. People are literally, the average salary is about 25, 30 grand a year. Everything's going up apart from salaries. What, how do you see the next few years panning out? I'm going to say this now, and I'm someone from a council estate. I don't have a clue how the average person is still surviving. I don't get it. Like 25, 30 grand a year in the, in, in the current world is such a tiny amount of money. Mm. It's, uh, man, it's about to be worse than ever before. It's going to be have-nots and have-yachts. It's going to be, it's always been that way. Yeah. But it's become, going to become worse and worse. As inflation gets out of control, as the price of assets soar, the richer are going to become richer and the poor are going to become poorer. I know that most people don't understand economics as a whole. They don't understand money as a whole because if the people watching this, if they all understood how all this shit worked, they, there'd, be a, there'd be a revolution tomorrow. So they don't understand any of it. But it's very difficult for a government to even pretend to give a shit about the average person to me because I understand how all this works. So the government comes along and decides to give out free money average person in the middle or at the bottom goes, wait, free money. Government cares about the poor person. No, they don't. If they, let's imagine, let's keep it very simple. Let's say they gave every person in the UK a thousand pounds. They're either going to save that money or they're going to spend that money or they're going to, let's say, invest that money. If they spend that money, which is what 90% of them would do, it goes to corporations, making the corporations filthy rich. The stock, of, the stock price of Amazon during COVID went to the moon. Because everyone's sitting at home bored, just buying stuff, right? So there's less corporations than there are people. So let's say you give everyone in the UK a thousand pounds. A lot of that money goes to one guy, Jeff Bezos. The rich get richer, just like before. Let's say they invest it. Well, they can invest it in what? The stock market? Well, that increases the price, the share price of companies. Who owns companies? Rich people. Let's say for somehow 200 of these people are best friends and they're never gonna argue and they get together and they get 200,000 pounds and they buy a house, for example. That's still gonna raise the price of housing on that street. The house owners, the homeowners are going to get richer. The people who already own things, the asset owners are always going to get richer. No matter what you do, the people who are poor are always going to get poorer and the asset owners are always going to get richer. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's running away now to a point where the, the chance of buying a home on the average salary is near, near on impossible. I mean, you know some hacks, you know some things about it, et cetera, et cetera. But I don't know how people are surviving on this money because in my, I come from a council state in Luton, that's fine. But now I'm living in a world where I go to, I mean, I can talk a bunch of rich people stuff right here. I, it, it, for me, it's very normal now to jump on a jet from Bucharest, where I live in Romania. I'll go to Monaco, that's 30, 40 grand. We'll, we'll go stay in a hotel, which is five grand a night. We'll go out for dinner, three or four of us, that costs 15, 20 grand. Uh, we'll stay, we'll have a business meeting, and I'll jet home. I'll spend 250, 200,000 pounds a weekend to go to a meeting. <laughs> and, and I'm not the only one doing it. There's 30 other guys there doing the same thing. Like, I don't think uh, people uh, who are working normal jobs understand that there are people out here making such ridiculous sums of money. And that would be the hardest thing for me if I ever had to get plugged back into the matrix and work for 30 grand a year. It's not the, not the wage, just knowing how badly I'm being wrecked. Yeah. It would just, I'd be like, knowing how much I'm being screwed would just upset me. But yeah, it's gonna get harder and harder. It's not gonna get any easier. The government has no power to legislate money into the hands of the poor. They can take more money off the rich or they can attempt to. We can talk about that in a second because they really can. But they can attempt to take more money from the rich. But throughout the bureaucracy and the, the way the machine works and the corruption inside of every government, by the time they, let's say they take, let's say they take 100 million, let's make it easy numbers, maybe 30 million of it might end up kind of somewhere a little bit. And then we have the same problem we discussed earlier. The poor people just spend it goes back to the rich people. Yeah. Like it's, it's just the way the whole system's set up. The average people come to me and say, what do I do? I'm just the average guy. And my only answer is stop being the average guy. It's my only answer. You can't just be the average guy anymore. The, the idea from the 1950s that you can just be the normal, average, law-abiding, hard-working citizen and you'll have a good life is gone. Any man out here who goes, I'm just going to work hard, do my bit, and obey the laws, and I'll have a good life. No, you won't. No, you will not. Just doing your job is never going to make you rich because you're just going to be taxed into infinity and you're going to stay broke. So just obeying laws and doing your job now has set you up for, to be a peon and a slave for eternity. You have to get yourself in a position where you're making enough money that 
I'm not saying laws can be broken, but there's there certainly can be bent. I mean, I think you know this with accountancy and the way the tax laws work. You get to a certain level where it's like, okay, yeah, let, we can just put that one to the yeah. side. Ar we can twist that one around. Arnold Schwarzenegger oh. says, break the rules, but don't break the law. Completely, yeah, and that's basically it, right? So you get to a certain level, and that's where it's really interesting because the, the average peon, their, their answer to all this is, we need to tax the rich because they don't understand how money works. They don't understand how the world works, and they think that rich people are out here working some kind of job that you can tax. Ta how do you tax a rich guy? How do you tax a rich man? Firstly, let me tell you something about myself and most rich people. We don't own anything. I don't own anything. I don't own anything. There may be a trust fund in Ecuador that owns a company in Singapore that might own a yacht that I could borrow, for, for example. I don't own shit. So <laughs> that's the first thing. The second thing, you have all these different jurisdictions around the world, extremely complicated. How are you gonna tax a rich guy? He has houses here, houses there, company here, company there, all the companies making a loss. Does Starbucks pay tax? No, that Starbucks supposedly doesn't make money. Supposedly Uber's never made profit. An app on the phone with millions of cars around the world and people working endless hours for them and them getting a cut of it to run an app. Supposedly they never made profit, never paid a penny tax. Funny how that works. You can't tax the rich. It's too complicated. You can't tax the rich. It doesn't work. All you're going to do is just drive them into other countries. If England right now, today, were to announce a huge tax on the rich, the rich people would just go, oh, cool, cool. I'll base my company out of Belize. Mm. A few pieces of paper, <laughs> fuck you. I mean, can I push back a little bit on that point? Is that okay? Sure. I mean, you say rich don't own anything. I don't know, any, I know quite a few billionaires. Yeah. I don't know any billionaires that don't own stuff. All of my friends who are billionaires own a lot of stuff, myself included, land, properties, businesses. And that's an interesting way to look at it. So I'm, when I say don't own anything, I mean, I don't want to work on a public podcast here. I guess it depends on your ethos towards business. The problem with owning something is that it can be taken from you. So let's look at it the American way. In America, litigation is a big problem. Everyone gets sued all the time. So you don't want to own anything because if you get sued, then you're going to have to pay that debt and you might have to sell your assets to pay that debt. Not if it's a company though, if it's a limited company. Correct. This is the point. So yeah. People don't own anything themselves. Okay, so they don't think it's, company. It's, it's, in a, it's a limited company owns it, yeah, a trust yeah, owns yes, it. Exactly. So you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at the Panama Papers. Yeah. Look at it. And, and then it gets really complicated. And this is what I'm saying, where the average Joe Schmo at home has no idea exactly. how this stuff yeah, works. Yeah. Because let's look at Nike, for example. Nike doesn't pay, no, Nike doesn't pay any tax. Why does not Nike not pay tax? Well, I'll give you a very simple version. They have two companies. One set up in Belize with a 1% tax rate, one set up in Europe. The one set up in Europe sells Nike trainers, pays all the staff, pays the stores, sells all the shoes, makes all the money, blah, 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 makes millions and millions and millions of profit. The one in Belize owns the trademark. So after 100 million, 200 million, whatever it is, comes into the European company, the European company has a debt to Belize to use the trademark of mm. all the profit. Yeah. Isn't that coincidental? Yeah, right. That goes to Belize. Then Belize government comes along and goes, give us 1%. Nothing. Boom, boom, done. Tax paid. It's all a scam. It's all a lie. It's all a scam. The person who get fucked, it's always the same. It's the guy in the middle. Yeah. The guy in the middle is going to get wrecked. It makes me laugh when they talk about, we're going to increase taxes, da, da, da. When they talk about increases taxes, they're not trying to chase down the billionaire on his yacht because they can't. They're trying to chase down the guy with an address who can't move, can't leave. He has a mortgage debt two kids and a dog living somewhere in Sunderland and he's stuck there. They have, there is a, there's a cost benefit analysis and there's a risk return on every action that we take as humans. If I was in charge of a tax authority, I'd sit there and go, okay, we have all these millionaires and they're all on jets and they're everywhere and they have seven passports and these complicated corporate structures and we'll, this is gonna take years to penetrate. We need money now. Who can we get now? Oh, we'll get hit. Some dude, turn up, you owe us money. How much? 50. I don't have 50 grand, I'll pay you 10. Cool, thanks. Because <laughs> he can't resist it. The guy in the middle can't resist. And this is why I'm saying about having things in your name. When you have things in your name, you're in trouble because if you say no to that tax bill, what do they take? Your house, your car, you just take your shit. So that's why, I mean, I don't know about your structure and obviously we can't talk on an open podcast, but the richest people I know don't own anything. They don't, they don't own anything. Yeah, their companies will. Well, but it, it can get even more advanced than that because companies can then still be litigated, but trusts can't. 